It's a me, Michael, and today we're gonna to be watching Super Mario Bros. I'm here in San Antonio, Texas at Regal Cinemas, and it's raining in Texas. We don't know how to act, but let's go. It's gonna be okay. Come with me. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Here we go. Peaches, 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 peaches. Hey there, everyone. I just saw Super Mario Brothers for the second time, and I'm finally ready to talk about it. In this animated rendition, a Brooklyn plumber named Mario travels through the Mushroom Kingdom with a princess named Peach and an anthropomorphic mushroom named Toad to find Mario's brother Luigi and to save the world from a ruthless, fire-breathing Koopa named Bowser. So when I heard about this movie coming out and it was going to be voiced by Chris Pratt as Mario, I saw red flags. I'm like, I've seen Lego movie. I've seen Chris Pratt do his thing. He's just going to do a Chris Pratt voice with a little spaghetti and meatball tossed in there. But after about a minute, Chris Pratt being a character, I was locked in. I was like, yes, that's Mario. I've been rewatching Parks and Rec and I realized I like Chris Pratt. I like him in the Jurassic World. I like him in Lego movie. I like him in Guardians of the Galaxy. And therefore, there is no reason moving forward to doubt Chris Pratt. But anyway, let's jump into the delicious world that the Illumination Studio was able to bring us. From the trailers, you can see the attention to detail, and they were able to stay true to the design we know and love. We first visit favorites like Bowser's Castle, which of course was spooky and dark and it had lava all around it. But the location that brought back the most memories was seeing Peach's Castle. I just love seeing Peach's stained glass window. It just brings back so many memories. I instantly heard the Mario 64 music playing in my head. You put those locations together with the theme music that Brian Tyler Tyler created and it is pure magic. They even had that little cannon outside of Peach's castle where you can go in and launch yourself about a hundred yards. There's also Rainbow Road and Donkey Kong Island and so many other locations that just bring back memories to little Michael Aww. when I was playing NES and N64. And man, the action is done so well. I love the way they got Mario's running style down. Like he's running, but then he picks up speed. He's like, it was awesome. And they actually did it right. If I could compare the action style, it's kind of like the Kingsman. If you've seen the Kingsman, you'll recognize the speed and grace of the choreography, and it's just so breathtaking. Chris Pratt and Charlie Day are so good as brothers in this movie. These are two guys you would never suspect are going to be brothers, but they had such chemistry in this movie, and I love the family dynamic that they bring here. It's just really refreshing to see two brothers actually love and care about each other. They even say as long as they have each other, they can make it through anything. And then you got Kegel Mike and Key as Toad, and he is funny as always, but he actually adds something to this movie, and he's super cute and super adorable. And of course, you have Jack Black, the master of voice acting, and he is awesome in this movie. He's another one of those actors that can get caught up in his voice being so recognizable, but in this movie, he actually does a pretty good Bowser. And of course, you have Anya Taylor-Joy as Peach, and I really like how they leaned into her being more of a warrior princess rather than a damsel in distress like she always is in the cartoons or the video games. But at the same time, she's very very sweet and very loving and she's won over the toad people and that's how she became the princess and they go into her backstory a little bit and they leave the door open just enough for new possibilities moving forward i like how in this movie they stay faithful to the games and they stay true to the mechanics of the game for example the mystery blocks in this movie are a big deal and once you punch it an item pops out and you get a special ability See, in other movies, they would have made their own rendition and they would have got creative. But no, if you just stick to the basics of the original content, you will be so successful. And I encourage other video game movies to do the same. And the animation style was so lush and so colorful and beautiful. And there's a few moments where they hit the angles just right. Hurrah! The thing about these nostalgia movies is if you do it right, you will get what I call the chills factor or the goosebumps. There's an egg on your head. And there's quite a few in this movie, and that's when the hairs stand up on your arms, and you get the goosebumps running down your neck, and you start to lose control of your body. And for a guy like me, this is rare, but when it happens, it's in magic. Like when you see the Avengers assemble for the first time in theaters, or when you see all three Spider-Man running off the scaffolding and jumping off and free falling. If you're like me, you got the chills and a little bit of tears started happening. In my theater, I was sitting in the middle of the middle, and there was people behind me. I'm sure there was kids, there was parents. But they didn't know who the f I was. They had no idea that they'd see a grown man spazzing out, making simple jack noises, and hollering and laughing and crying during the movie. And I looked back a couple times, I was like, yeah. I'm a real one. The point is, if you're like me and you grew up playing Mario and playing Luigi and all these games, then you're gonna love this movie. Now let's get into the negatives of the movie. 
think I'm officially tired of Seth Rogen being in animated features. He's been in so many animated movies that he's done a better job in the past. In this movie, he doesn't even sound like Seth Rogen anymore. Yeah, he does his little, <laughs> his little laugh, but it's watered down. I guess when he got skinnier and older, he lost that signature voice that he always had. Like he played Mantis in Kung Fu Panda. He was Blob in Monsters vs. Aliens, Lion King. He's an Invincible and so many others. Comment below, what's your least favorite Seth Rogen performance? And also because this movie is so fast paced, it's so short, you miss exploring some of these open worlds. And they never slow down and build the background and the motivation for some of these characters. Watching it the second time, I realized what was wrong with this movie. And it was just that there were so many simplified things that happened that they would just move on from thing to thing to thing with very little resistance. It was just a little unrealistic, but everything was like, oh yeah, you want my help? I'll help you. Oh, if you're looking for the princess, it's over there. Like it's just very, very simple and quick to the point. And I think this is where Pixar really excels over Illumination is that they develop their characters a lot more. You can really get the heart and soul of the movies from their characters. But where Illumination excels is that they include a lot of musical hits in their movies and they just make it a lot more fun and fast paced. Sadly, the music was awesome, but it also brings me to my biggest negative, and that is the music. If you've seen Shazam 2 last month, or Shrek 2, or Free Guy, or Detective Pikachu, or Footloose, or Euphoria, then you've heard Holding Out for a Hero over and over again. Sadly, it worked so well in this movie. It was perfect. But for me, I've heard it a hundred times. Another song they've beaten to the ground is Aha, Take On Me. Again, in this movie, it was put together so well. It worked 100%, very, very powerful. But I've heard it, I've heard AHA before any of these kids have ever heard it. I've heard the song a thousand times. But I just heard it in The Last of Us. If you watch The Last of Us on HBO, they just played it. If you've seen Deadpool 2, it's in it. If you've seen Despicable Me, it's in it. Despicable Me is an Illumination property and they play the, the song in both movies. I mean, that's laziness. But this is a kid's movie. It's an hour and a half long. The themes aren't very deep here. The character development is pretty weak. But for me, I love the music. I love the action. I love the Easter eggs and all the moves from Mario to Super Smash Bros. They are in this movie. And that's something I thought I would never see. And if you're a kid and you don't know who Seth Rogen is and you've never heard these songs before like I have, then you will enjoy it. And you will enjoy it if you're a true Mario fan. These are just nitpicks from an old man. Guys, I really enjoyed this movie. I walked out feeling uplifted and giddy and happy, and it was a lot of fun. And that's why I'm gonna give Super Mario Bros. No, don't do it. A B minus. Or an 84 if you're a numbers guy. If you enjoyed this video, guys, please subscribe, become a member of the MF Army. Comment below, guys, what movie should I see next? And as always, guys, thank you so much for returning to the channel. I appreciate all the love. You guys, take care of yourself, take care of your family, and we will see you on the next one.